The modern world would not survive without electricity. It's fundamental to everything we do, transportation, communication, entertainment, everything. But now we're in an era where the demand for power is more than we can provide. Here's the thing. We know a whole lot more today than we knew 40 years ago about any system, particularly nuclear power. In the 70s, we built about 53 or 54 plants, I believe it was. We built them fast. We built them as inexpensive as any other industrial project. And suddenly we had a lot of nuclear power. So fast forward. The new generation of nuclear reactor technology, commonly referred to as advanced reactors, ARs, they are safer, cleaner, cheaper. And we'll have all the electricity we need. But we haven't built any yet. Why? Well, unfortunately, the regulations were all written a long time ago, and they've been held there. It's not been modernized. My name is Ray Rothrock. I'm a professional nuclear engineer and venture capitalist. For the last 12 years, I've been working on addressing the issues in the nuclear regulatory framework that's honestly holding us back. My first job as a professional nuclear engineer was to work at a company called Yankee Atomic, where I actually was the safety analysis engineer on Yankee Row. Yankee Row was the first commercial plant in the US, and it operated beautifully into the late 90s when it was decommissioned at the end of its life. Part of the nuclear regulatory requirements are you have to address certain safety components. And a lot of those prescriptions do not apply to the advanced reactor. Oklo is a perfect example of that. So in a pressurized water plant, Gen 3, the stuff I worked on and that's operating today, water circulates to cool the plant. That's how you get the heat out. And there's an accident called a loss of coolant accident where the big pipe breaks and all the water spills out and so the thing heats up. Over time, all the regulations have been focused on that kind of technology. Essentially one size fits all. And that's become a checklist for an application. Well, Okla doesn't have water. It doesn't have a circulating coolant. Look, if you're not circulating water, why do you need to have a LOCA analysis? But Okla was the first non-water cool plant the NRC had seen. And the NRC said, sorry, the regulation says prescriptively, you have to do this, you have to do that to address this accident, which is not even possible. And the NRC rejected their license. That sort of prescriptive ossification, if you will, just as an engineer, as a human being, it doesn't make sense to me. Having studied this for over a decade with a lot of smart people, I think there are three things we can do to make the NRC better. Step one, probabilistic licensing. All this prescriptive regulation needs to be converted into a probabilistic results-oriented regulation. This is the way many other agencies work. Take the drug business, the FDA business, all their licensing is based on results, not on process. Just prove to me it's safe. Okay, I gotta do whatever I think that proves that, and I'll show you the data. And you can say, yep, data's good. But that's not the way the nuclear business works. You gotta do it the way I tell you to do it so that I am assured that you've done it right. It's like thou shalt do it this way. Thou shalt build, for example, a containment building. That's not needed in a plant that doesn't have pressurized water. Yet the regulations say, thou shalt build it that way. That makes no sense. Step two, appoint an accountable leader. So the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, there are five commissioners that are appointed by the President of the United States and confirmed by the Senate. But it doesn't have a single point of accountability. It doesn't have a chief executive officer to whom the commission can look to and hold accountable for decisions or results come out of the organization and for moving forward to address this new world of the ARs. There's a head of the FAA, there's a head of the FDC, there's a head of the CDC, but there's no head of the NRC. That person, how that person acts, what they say, the decisions they make, the pace that they want things done, that's the culture of the organization. That doesn't exist here. Step three, a separate division for the advanced reactors. So if we got a CEO over the whole nuclear regulatory 
Commission staff, there should be a separate organization to evaluate the advanced reactors. Look, the, the NRC is doing a great job on the existing fleet. Uh, these reactors are mostly the same, the regulations work, and safety records increase, so don't, let's not mess with that. But we've got this new stuff that's just different. Approach it in a whole different framework than the existing fleet. Fresh people, fresh ideas, with a new culture and a new leader. What really matters at the end of the day is not that we've satisfied 10,000 check marks on some punch list. What does matter is that we've built a plant that is safe, that people trust, and that will generate electricity for their whole life. So here we are in 2025. We've got all these new reactors under development. We've got a world that's got 7 billion plus people on it. We know that electricity makes people's lives better everywhere. So we need to fix our nuclear regulatory system so that these reactors can get to market fast. We're gonna be building it basically right back there behind us. If we get this right, future generations will look back and thank us for it. We will decarbonize our grid. We will bring more electricity to other parts of the world that don't presently have it. And I just, I just gotta believe that'll be a better world. It'll be cleaner, safer, and probably more peaceful. What really can change the game here, in my opinion, is for the President of the United States to make a speech that says, this is important, let's get it done. Kennedy did it with the Apollo program. Eisenhower did it with Adams for Peace. I mean, it takes national leadership, and I'm beginning to believe that's the only thing that's gonna get us out of this sort of nuclear slump right now. We started it in the 20th century. Let's finish it in the 21st.